let's move to some uh, to some rapid fire. I think we've got some great stuff here. But okay. uh, let's let's move to some rapid fire questions. Uh, in hopefully in twenty words or less, what do you consider your most valuable failure? I've had a lot of failures in my life. I think anytime you put yourself out there, you're going to fail. And I think failure is really important. Uh, this may be a cop out, but I don't like to. Th- I don't like the word failure. And when we're talking about this, I, valuable lessons, things that you tried that didn't work out, I think would be a, a better way I'd like to frame it. Sure. I mean, a divorce, uh, for example. Uh, obviously, I've, I've I've learned a lot from from a, a failure like that. Um, but I, I think I'll choose to answer, answer your question by saying, uh, again, not so much a failure, but my attempt to be an accountant. Uh, it it really didn't work out too well. It's just not me, you know, the traditional accountant. And uh, and I was working at Cooper's and Librand, and I was uh, potentially. I I think I I had a career there, and I was doing a good job, but it, it really wasn't feeding who I am, and so it didn't work out. But it was extremely valuable experience. Mm-hmm. I learned a whole lot, and I wouldn't be right here in the business school today if not for that that failure of mine if you want to call it a failure okay so one lesson i take from that is you got to try stuff man you you know get out of the get out of your your box and try stuff even and don't be afraid to fail because i mean we we say that it's cliche but it's just so true that you you learn from failure you learn from from falling down making an attempt getting back up and dusting yourself off and moving on so uh, i would i would just say to people don't be afraid of failure Right. That was more than 20 words. Huh? <laughs> it's all good. We, uh, I, I enjoy, I enjoy your openness. Um, you are a very open guy. Do you think people still have misconceptions about you? What you, if, if so, what do you think their biggest misconception is? Well, I'm told that, and I'm, I think I'm going to trust this, that some people see me as aloof and that, um, that overly critical of, okay. of others. Okay. And uh, I, I think it is a misconception. I, I deeply care about people, and I, I, I really want to help others. I, I tend to be very honest. In fact, this goes back even when I was a child. My nickname in the, my neighborhood by the adults was Honest John. <laughs> and I, I've always been a truth teller. And so the downside of being a truth teller is that people think you're overly critical. Maybe people think you're perhaps arrogant or aloof at times. And the reality is I'm, I'm trying to help people. And, and I've found a profession. I found a job that allows me to be a truth teller in order to help people. But I, I think that does have, carry its downside, which is sometimes people think I'm overly critical. My stand and deliver, we talked about stand and delivers. I wasn't going to tell this story, but my first stand and deliver in your class, you actually stopped me in the middle of it. And you, there were a few words and phrases that you pointed to as inaccessible, which was fair. It was, it was a fair thing to say. And then I came up to see you in your office a couple of days later and you said, we, we sat there talking for a few minutes and you said, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you come off very differently here one-on-one than you do in the classroom. And I'm not sure why that was. Uh, I know that I was much more comfortable. I felt that I could engage with you in a way that I had not been able to in the classroom, but I think that was more just a function of not being as familiar with my fellow students. There were a lot of other things in the room that were, I don't know if I would say distracting me, but it was um, that the first several weeks of your class were very challenging for me. I felt, I feel like I found my stride a little bit bit later on. You did. And I, I think you know this, but what I was trying to tell you there was that you're, you're an extremely engaging, warm person, but you were, coming off as a little bit distant in mm. front of the class. And I was just mm-hmm. pushing you to be more yourself and, and connect with people. And it's funny. Nietzsche, Nietzsche says, you stare for an abyss. St- Nietzsche says, stare into the abyss and the abyss stares also into you. But I found the opposite to be true as well. When you open yourself up, when you say, here's my soul, see who I am. People respond by doing the same. Yeah. They say, Oh, I, well, here, here I am. Yeah, here I am. See me as well, and yeah. let's be, let's that's be, great. let's be kin to each other, and that's and and be kind to each other. Hopefully, that's as beautiful. Well. So, 
If you could have anyone as a mentor for one day, who would it be? You know, there's so many people. Um, a business person I've thought of there is Bill George. I don't know if you know who Bill George is, a former CEO of Medtronic. And he's a guy you'll see on business programs on television, uh, making uh, as a commentator and whatnot. I've written several books uh, on leadership. True North mm -hmm. is a book I think you probably encountered. Yes. He's a guy I greatly admire. But, you know, you, you just said, you mentioned kindness mm -hmm. a minute ago. One of the... One of the people that comes to mind when people ask me, who are your heroes? Who would you like to mentor? Is actually the Dalai Lama. Uh, and that's a good answer. and when, when asked uh, to describe his religion, do you know what the Dalai Lama responded? He said, my religion is kindness. Hmm. And I think he's a guy who I could probably benefit from being around for a day, you know, and, and just really seeing that, seeing that kind of true embodied kindness. It makes me think of what you said earlier about meditation. I don't think there's, so my religion, uh, so I, I, I happen to be a Christian, but I mentioned to Shannon a few weeks ago that if I were choosing a mentor, I would maybe choose a religious leader from a religion that's not my own. That's a because great answer. I think some of the, some of the problems in the world right now, and I think that everyone would agree that 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 we have some problems happening at this moment. I think some of that comes from, as much as I hate to say it as a religious person, some of that comes from the the fear of religious people to engage with other religions yeah. and to say, what is good here? Yeah. What what can be what benefit can be had here? What what can I learn from these people whose way of life is different than mine? And there's sort of Maybe the fear is that if my own religion is the true one, as I believe, then I, I want to distance myself from anything other than what I find to be the inerrant truth, mm -hmm. because that that's sort of false or hollow in some way. Yeah. And I don't think that's true. There are many people who believe in Islam. Islam is not my own religion, but I think that there's... There's so much to be gained from people who see the world in that way yeah. and being willing to adopt a different perspective and say, what is valuable about this? What is good in this mm -hmm. um, is so important. And that actually, I think, is something that we don't do well yet, but we are getting better at is not being xenophobic about other philosophies. Amen. So um, well, well said. What is what is your fondest memory of something that's happened since you've been at Texas A&M? Uh, well, uh, of course, student award. Uh, I've, I've won several teaching awards, and those are great memories, especially the ones that were voted on by the students. That, mm -hmm. that just was incredibly touching. But but I'll mention something that, that was pretty important to me. Um, a few years ago, you may recall, we had uh, Richard Spencer yes. uh, speak here on campus, and there was a, a, a pretty uh, uh, vigorous response, yes. shall I say. Yes. And I was there. I, I, I showed up. And I was just so impressed that in this traditionally conservative uh, university, we had such an outpouring of peaceful uh, demonstrators to say, not, not I'm going to prevent this guy from speaking. I'm mm -hmm. not going to scream and shout, but I'm just going to show up in a spirit of love and diversity and openness. And it's something that, that I don't think I'm not sure you'd have seen that at A and M twenty thirty years ago maybe, but it it was is a beautiful thing to see yeah. it really was and I, I'll be honest it it got a little ugly towards the end there were some people that started getting a little bit violent and saying some things to the policemen who were there that were disrespectful and at that at that point my wife and I checked out and said okay it's time to go home but but for that hour or so where it was just a spirit of not challenging anything just to say we're here and. And uh, we want, want our, our, our voice of peace and diversity to be heard. Uh, it was beautiful. It's such a tough line to walk, the line between freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. And I, I, don't even know, I don't even know what the other side of the line would be. But to, to tell someone, you can say more or less, there, there are certain exceptions, but to say more or less whatever you want, even if I think it is terrible. Yeah. And atrocious. Yeah. 
Um, and to allow people to do those things is some of what makes our country great. Yeah, I think we've lost our way a little bit there. And, and ironically, the left, it's, I think it's one of the problems with the left today is, is you know, deplatforming speakers and whatnot. And, and, and traditionally, the left was the, was the side of free speech. Mm-hmm. And, and I understand, it's, it's a, as you say, it's a very complicated issue. But, uh, man, I, th- I, think, um, I, I think we have to get back to that. I, I, dis- I, I disagree with what you're saying, but I defend your right to say it. Right. Um, so what, uh, what do you have coming up? Do you have anything to plug? What's going on, uh, what's going on with your art? What's going on with your music? What should, what should people know about? Uh, well, if you ask me what I have to plug, what my first thought I have is vote. It's not not <laughs> not me, but I want to plug voting. People vote, please. We have upcoming elections. It's important that you vote. Uh, I've always got something to plug, Ben. Of course, uh, I have a new band called Alone Stars. It's my <laughs> it's my new yeah, <laughs> it's my new live uh, thing, and we are playing first Friday November at the Grand Stafford. I don't know when this this uh, interview is going to air, uh, but if it's before November, first Friday, then we, we will be playing uh, at the first Friday at Grand Stafford, downtown Bryan. So got that to plug. And Leavenworth, uh, we're working on our uh, third CD. We're about halfway done with that. So hopefully, if not this fall, early next uh, in 2019, we'll be releasing that. I have uh, I have the first two. I haven't listened to all of them yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, and we'll close with some uh, some good bull, an opportunity to recognize someone else for something great that they have done. You got any good bull for us today? Yeah, I would like to recognize my wife. Oh. Uh, my wife um, has is coming up on her 15 year year. Uh, so sober date. Oh. Um, and she's she's not only successfully sober for 15 years, she's devoting her life to helping others live a more healthy um, life and um, especially people with chronic pain and, and people who have addiction. Uh, but just people in general, I, I think she's she's just um, really inspiring that she's She's pretty much devoting her life to helping others manage their life in a more healthy way. And uh, so I'd love to recognize her for that. I have a family member who had a sobriety birthday recently as well. Those yeah. are those are very impressive milestones. I, I don't, at some level, it's, it's hard for me to get to understanding the, um, the compulsion mm-hmm. that, that, that a person is is generally born with uh, that makes them you know that makes them have to seek they eventually have to seek sobriety but i think um i think doing our best to put ourselves in the shoes of people who um who struggle with things like that is is a big part of developing empathy which i'm sure you'll agree is just vitally important absolutely to the human experience so uh yeah congrats to uh congrats to your wife and um yeah and and best wishes with that walk in the future so any final thoughts you almost always have something on your mind any any final thoughts for the listeners well i'll just uh i i think i'll just conclude by thanking you this is um thank you not only for inviting me but thank you for this project it's a it's a great idea i'd love to see your creativity at at work here and and I applaud you and Shannon and the program for doing this. I think it's a great idea and look forward to hearing uh, what guests you have in the future. I'm looking forward to it too. As, as we discussed before, before we went live, I have, I just have this need to understand people and to know why they are the way they are and what makes them do the things they do, find out what they fear, what makes them brave. Um, what do they, what do they keep to themselves? I want to know those things and I'm not, af- and I'm not afraid to tell them those things about me either. Yeah, that's great. So anyway, uh, so that concludes our show today. Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you. We appreciate the opportunity to share ourselves with you and, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks and gig em. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to stay up to date on our latest videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive notifications. If you're in a rush or on the road, you can still join us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. 
If you want to learn more about us or our guests, please visit our website at maze.tamu.edu slash podcasts. Also, please check out Maze Business School's academic programs. They're the sponsors of our show, and you can find them in the description. Thanks, and gig em.